the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, this is the third part of uh, the series that we are studying, Good Directions, talking about the sacrament of uh, uh, repentance and confession. And, and today we're going to start uh, to, to study some of the obstacles of the sacrament, what's standing on your way of the sacrament. If it's so wonderful and so good, as we discussed before, let's just discuss some of the obstacles and, and try to deal with it, um, especially in, in your discussion. You know, in, in John 10.10, 10, Jesus said that the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. In the same verse that Jesus said, I have to... I came to give them abundant life. He said that there is a thief also is trying to snatch this uh, and snatch this life out of them. There is the enemy who is trying to stop us and, and put obstacles in the way of our growth and our salvation, especially in this sacrament. <clears throat> and we have to be honest, we know that confession is, is a great and amazing thing and uh, a great step in our growth. But it is very difficult, it is very tough, and no matter how many times you do it, you still, every time, it's, you know, it has this um, fear uh, that comes with it. But we want to overcome this fear, and we want to overcome uh, these problems. So, let's study some of the myths that the devil put in, in our way, in our heart, and our mind with the sacrament. Myth number one. I don't need to confess to a priest, I confess directly to God. I'm sure you've heard that before. And you need to know that admitting to God is not admitting it. You know, um, it's really vague and it's not clear when you say, I admit it to God or I confessed it to God. And would confession to God be enough? There is no restitution. And what kind of restitution I need to give? And how much? What is the measure? What do I need to do? Uh, all these questions are not answered. Any sin that is stayed in the darkness is going to grow more and more and to take full of control as long as it's in the darkness. Confession is healing and, and makes this healing real and available for you. Um, and it, it definitely helps that, that you have steady growth in your spiritual life. You know that our church and orthodoxy is, is focused on discipleship. Um, Jesus had disciples and he discipled them one on one. And the disciples, he had other disciples and he discipled them one on one. I do need a priest, I, don't, I do need a coach, I need someone to help me. Why? Because this is the best way we learn. We need uh, someone to help, we need a coach. Um, so I need to confess to my father of confession in order to be discipled. Okay? So don't say I can confess just directly to God, I really need to be discipled. I need uh, uh, help. Uh, as it says in the Proverbs 15.22, but in the multitudes of counselors, there are step, they are established. The ways of a man is established. As you know, when Jesus appeared to St. Paul, he just didn't send him to the world like this. He sent him to Ananias, and, and, or, uh, and, and uh, Ananias, he discipled him and he sent him. Same as Samuel, he was discipled under Eli, and so on. Everyone... Uh, had a coach, everyone had, even the greatest players, you know, in the, in the sports, they have coaches. They can just do, uh, do it on their own. Um, the book of Deuteronomy 32.7 says, Ask your father, he will tell you, and your elder, that they will declare it to you. We need the, the help and the guidance of others. And to tell the truth, there is no growth without evaluation. No evaluation, no growth. Okay, so we do need the coach, we need the priest, we need the discipleship that we get with that. So this is myth number one. Myth number two, 
I know exactly what my father's confession will tell me. I can just fix problems on my own. Sure, you've said that before. I myself said it because, you know, I'm a priest and I confess to other priests, so uh, sometimes it gets to me that I know it all. But I'm telling you, every time I say that, and every time I, I try to expect what my father's confession is trying to tell me, he would tell me something different just to prove to me that, you know, I can do it on my own, even though I'm a priest, I need a coach. Um, so, uh, you cannot assume that and you cannot have the mentality of, I know it all. Um, St. Paul said that in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. Okay? Don't think that you can do it on your own. Don't think that you are strong enough. Okay, so, and the truth is, I should never assume remedy for my problem. I am patient, not doctor. I need to know that. I should never assume remedy for my problem. I'm patient, not doctor. It's very dangerous for anyone to treat people as a doctor while he's not, and he's not experienced, he didn't study, and he didn't practice this. It takes a lot to be a doctor, so... I cannot just assume that I'm a doctor and treat myself on my own, especially when it comes to something fatal like my spiritual life and my eternity. Myth number three, I am too embarrassed to confess a certain sin. Abuna will look down at me. Of course, this is human nature. Um, it has pride and it has some kind of appearance. And to tell you the truth, even if I don't, I'm not afraid of Abuna looking down at me, it's just very hard sometimes to confess certain thing, uh, sins. For some people who are starting their spiritual life, it seems very hard in the beginning. Once they get to know their father of confession, his fatherhood, his, father, his, his love and unconditional love for them, it becomes easier on them. But still, it, it, it continues to be tough for, for, for other people. But... I'm telling you, it's really foolish to think of that. When someone comes and opens his heart to me, I say that this person is an honest person and becomes close to my heart and dear to my heart. I never say that he's too sinful because uh, I know that I'm a sinful person and no one is without sin and, and he's just a normal person who has sins and, you know, everybody does. So it is not true, it is a myth, it's from the devil, it's one of the obstacles the devil wants to put in order to uh, 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 stop us from the healing. So get past the embarrassment and, and be specific and be open, okay? Um, it's very embarrassing to go in front of the doctor and take off your clothes, but if you have to do it, you have to do it in order to be healed. That's what St. James says, 5, uh, James 5.16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. You want healing, you need that confession. So the truth is, my father of confession will continue to love me regardless of what I confess. You really need, this is to believe that because this is the truth. And, and number two, revealing my sin is the only way to be healed of it. Okay, so myth number four, I confess a certain sin many times and there is no improvement, so why do it? Okay, uh, another myth from the devil, if you get sick, you go to the doctor, you get sick twice, three times, ten times, you go to the doctor. You don't say, I'm fed up, no doctor, I'm not going to deal with it. Of course, uh, that's not wise and it's, it's going to lead to more sicknesses. You need to know that um, building... You know, an oak tree or a pine tree takes a lot of time rather than building, you know, uh, or growing a mushroom, which takes no time, okay? So, building on our spiritual life, God is always working in us. St. Paul says that in, Phil in Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Okay, so be patient. I need to be patient and confess as often as I fall into sin. 
There was a story about St. Moses the Strong when he was struggling, when he first uh, converted to Christianity, that he went to his father of confession 16 times in one night, just fighting the thoughts, and God gave him victory in the end. Myth number five, there is no way God could still love me after what I have done. Saying that actually is a sin, because it's doubting God's love and, and, and just hopelessness. It is a sin, because every, every page in the Bible disagree with that. David, when he repented, you know, in his uh, famous psalm, he said, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. So he mentioned the great mercy and the great compassion before mentioning the sin. God's compassion is much bigger, much stronger than uh, our sins. And when you doubt that, you're saying that the cross of Christ and the blood of Christ is not enough to cleanse all of my sins. And is God really going to accept me after all this? That's not a good question. And, 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 and of course, it's one of the wiles uh, of, uh, of the devil in order to uh, stop us from growing uh, our spiritual life. God's mercy is enough to forgive all my sins. Just enough for that. In Psalms, uh, Psalm 103, verse 12, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That is the truth. That's what the word of God says. Uh, myth number six, there is no rush, I will confess later, that's actually the worst one of them, makes it tougher, makes the heart grow colder, and uh, makes the heart get hardened day after day. Some people take the right hand thief on the cross as an example, but this is just one in millions of people. But there are other people who were there with Christ and listened to everything and they didn't repent. And they didn't, they, there was no change in their lives. So don't listen to the devil when he says, okay, tomorrow or excuses are going to be busy next week or, you know, or when, when, when he tells you, when I stop the sin, I will go. That's, of course, not wise. He can't say that when I'll get better, I'm going to go to the hospital. No, I'll go right now. I will wait no longer, I will confess as soon as possible. Procrastination or denial will lead only to pain while we're seeking healing. Okay? So, um, when we have these understandings, and, and if the devil is trying to put all this mess in front of us, please answer it from God's word and, and be assured it's a great thing, it's a good thing, and the devil will try to stop you. Anytime you think of confession, know very well that the devil will try to stop you. But overcome this, overcome the embarrassment, the excuses, and all of this in order to be healed. And glory be to God forever and ever.